The Legend of Jimmy Spoon by Christiana Gregory. Chapter 8, The Scalp Dance. Bonfires dotted the valley under a moonless sky. Drums pounded, a high-pitched singing rose in the night air, making Jimmy shiver. The voices sounded like a wail. In the center of camp, warriors circled the largest fire, the bells on their moccasins jingling loudly between drum beats. Their faces, arms, and chests were painted and, and feathers decorated their hair. To Jimmy's horror, some held spears in the air, dangling scalps from a recent raid on a wagon train. Jimmy clamped his hand over his mouth and swallowed the bile rising in his throat. He had heard about such things, but he hadn't thought friendly Indians killed people. A sickening sweet odor brought tears to his eyes. He was afraid and angry at the same time. Just that afternoon, Jimmy had played happily at the river with the older ch with the other children. When Gamu introduced him to a quiet girl named Nahani, Jimmy had blushed. Nahani was pretty. Her deer skin dress fell softly to her knees. Her feet were bare and brown. She had smiled shyly at him, then looked down. Jimmy had been too tongue-tied with joy to even say hello. But now this? This atrocity on the same day? Jimmy felt ashamed for having had so much fun among people who could be so savage. He counted six scalps, all caked with blood. One was a woman's long red hair, one a girl's blonde pigtails. Four were men's scalps, three dark, one gray. Jimmy thought about his family. His little sister was, wore pigtails. His uncle Lefty had gray hair. Molly's hair was long and flowing. He pictured their house pierced with burning arrows and his mother crying for help. Why had he left them? They needed him, and he wasn't there. He hated himself for thinking that living with Indians would be carefree. If only he were home. He would be good to the toddlers, and he wouldn't sass Clara ever again. Jimmy wanted to escape. Washaki Indians danced with scalps from the, Crow, from the Crow tribe. Only Pocatello's men had killed white settlers. The warriors stuck a tall pole in the ground, and strung the scalps on it. They danced and shrieked. It was the most horrible noise Jimmy had ever heard. Leaders from the different bands circled, lifting one knee high, then the other, bending at the waist over and over. In a larger ring around them, the warriors danced. Soon, the women put on their husbands' war bonnets and started their own dance in a larger circle outside the men's. Jimmy ran to his teepee. The dancing continued all, n all night, and the next day, and the next. And that is the end of chapter 8.